This week, boxing mourns the loss of former WBO world heavyweight champion Corey Sanders, who died last Saturday on the 22nd of September 2012 after being shot by armed robbers at a family function in Pretoria, South Africa, where he lived. Corey Sanders was a prospect, a heavyweight prospect in the 90s, and the first time I saw him was on a TV show here in the UK. It was was a, a... a uh, football program which used to come on Saturdays and during the football program they used to have a 10 minute segment where they would show a highlight reel of some of the best knockouts from around the world in uh, in boxing I think it was like a weekly or, or or fortnightly program something like that but anyway it would show a highlight reel of all these knockouts from around the world and Corey Sanders was always featuring on there and uh, the thing that struck me first and foremost about Corey Sanders apart from the fact that he was tremendously powerful and and had extremely quick hands was the fact that he didn't look like a boxer. You know, he didn't look like the stereotypical heavyweight boxer. Uh, You know, some big, strong, tough-looking, muscular guy that we were used to, you know, in the the 80s and 90s. Um, Corey Saunders looked like a... (laughs) He looked like a geography teacher or something, you know. He looked like a science teacher. You know, he he didn't look like a boxer. Um, So when he started coming out with all these big punches and knocking all these tough big tough American journeyman out it was like wow like <laughs> who the hell is this guy you know it caught it caught you off guard it really caught you off guard and I think it caught a lot of his opponents off guard you know or his appearance obviously looks can be very deceiving you know never judge a book by his cover and uh Corey Saunders that was that was part of the reason that was part of the thing that appealed to me about Corey Saunders that's one of the things I liked about him was that he didn't look like you know, he could fight, but he really could fight. You know, he was he was deadly with, with his uh, his left hand. Corey Sanders was a southpaw. He was around six feet four and he had tremendous physical ability, you know, incredible punching power, especially with the left hand. But he also had a good right hand, especially his right hook to the body. Very powerful right hook to the body. Um, tremendous combination puncher. And his left hand was probably, I'm not even joking, his left hand was probably the hardest southpaw left hand in the history of heavyweight boxing as far harder than any fighters I've ever seen anyway yeah I've never seen a southpaw heavyweight that could hit so well with a left hand as Corey Saunders right there there may have been a guy out there but I personally never saw him you know what I mean Corey Saunders was a tremendous puncher he had tremendous natural ability and again his combination punching ability was incredible incredible when, when Corey Saunders let his hands fly it was a thing of beauty Literally, that's one of the things, another one of the things I liked about him. Um, and I, I'm not even exaggerating here when I say this. But outside of maybe Muhammad Ali and Mike Tyson, there is no heavyweight that I've ever seen that was as impressive at throwing explosive combinations as Corey Saunders. And I'm being, and I'm, I'm not trying to put Corey Saunders in the same bracket as Mike Tyson and Muhammad Ali in terms of you know, how good he was overall as a fighter. I'm obviously not doing that because, you know, greatness is obviously based on achievement and, you know, the greats of heavyweight boxing obviously achieved a hell of a lot more than Corey Sanders achieved. So I'm not trying to put him on a pedestal and say he was better than he actually was. But I'm just I'm just talking purely about his physical attributes, yeah, and his some of his abilities. And his ability to punch in combination with hard punches was more impressive than any heavyweight I've seen, apart from Mike Tyson and Muhammad Ali. When, you know, prime Muhammad Ali, when he was fighting guys like Cleveland Williams, the combinations, the combinations he was putting together was incredible. You know, Mike Tyson, in his prime, when he was fighting people like Pinklin Thomas, you know, the combination punching was, was, was unreal. But Corey Sanders was, you know, apart from those two guys, I would say he was, you know, one of the very best uh, of throwing those explosive combinations. He was a thing of beauty to watch Corey Sanders let his hands go. And he often let his hands go. Um, and like I said, he was a, a prospect in the 90s. He put together some good wins. He beat he beat guys like Levi Billups. Levi Billups, just a few fights before, had given Lennox Lewis a very tough fight over 10 rounds. He managed to knock... Le- uh, Corey Sanders managed to knock Levi Billups out in two rounds. He also fought Burt Cooper. Burt Cooper was a very tough um, journeyman, very hard puncher who fought people like Evander Holyfield and Michael Mora knocked both of them down, gave both of them the scares of their life in those fights. Um, 
Burt Cooper also fought people like um, Ray Mercer, gave him a very tough fight. And, um, you know, Oliver McCall, who is most, probably most famous, apart from knocking out Lennox Lewis, Oliver McCall is probably most famous for uh, being Mike Tyson's sparring partner for years. And Oliver McCall said that Burt Cooper hit him harder than anyone else he's ever been in a ring with. Yeah, he sparred with Burt Cooper and he said Cooper hit him harder than anyone he's ever shared a ring with, including Tyson. Right, so Cooper was a dangerous guy. Um, Sanders got in the ring there with him and he dealt with Cooper very easily, knocked him out in three rounds, very impressive victory. And in that fight, he displayed his tremendous punching power, uh, his hand speed, and it, he actually made Cooper quit in that fight, if I remember rightly. I'm going to put annotation links to a lot of these fights that I mentioned on screen so you can go and click the links and... Uh, See these fights for yourselves. Uh, so yeah, he was going well. There's a prospect coming up um, with his explosive, pu explosive punching power and his fast starts because he would always try and get you out of there as early as possible. He was always a fast starter, which is something I like in fighters. I like people that don't mess around. They go out there and try and get you out as soon as possible. Um, that's definitely one thing I liked about Corey Sanders is he was, he was like that. Um, he was going along quite well, but then he ran into a fringe contender called Nate Tubbs and he lost... By a second round knockout, it was legit knockout, nothing wrong with it. Corey Sanders lost uh, his first loss. And I think he, you know, Corey Sanders was never really that dedicated to boxing. He was always a guy to me who, you know, he never really fulfilled his potential in boxing because he wasn't really that, like I say, he wasn't really that dedicated. His, his weight fluctuated up and down throughout his career. But even when he was out of shape, he was always dangerous. <laughs> yeah, he was always dangerous even when he was out of shape. Um... But as I said, he was, his weight was always up and down. And I think he, his commitment to boxing was even less after his first loss, which is, you know, often the way with fighters. Um, and I think Sanders pretty much saw boxing as just a means to an end. You know, he just saw it as a day job, which is a nine to five to him. You know, he wasn't really, he didn't really seem passionate about it. Um, I believe his first love was actually golf. He was a very, very good golfer. And um, that was actually his first love. Also, I believe he played rugby and he had a lot of interests outside of boxing. So boxing was literally literally just a way to fund his lifestyle. You understand? It was just a means to an end. It was just his nine to five. I'm sure he got some enjoyment out of boxing, but he wasn't really in love with it the way you know you need to be uh, to make the most out of your potential. So, yeah, he rebounded from the loss. He fought some other guys. He, he knocked out former cruiserweight champion Alfred Ice Cole in one round. Uh, he knocked out the UK's Michael Sprott in one round. Again, Michael Sprott said that Corey Sanders hit him harder than anyone he's ever shared a ring with. He said Corey Sanders' power was incredible. Um, Corey Sanders also fought uh, Hassim Rackman. He had a, a very, very entertaining fight with Hassim Rackman, almost like a slugfest. Uh, he nearly had Rackman out of there with an uppercut. And again, Rackman, Hassim Rackman said Corey Sanders was the hardest puncher he ever shared a ring with. Um, he said... Uh, you know, he hit harder than Lennox Lewis. You understand? And Hassim Bratman was knocked out by Lennox Lewis. I mean, tremendous combination Lewis hit him with. He said, you know what? Corey Sanders hit him even harder than that. The guy was in, had an incredible um, ability to hit hard with both hands, but especially the left. Um, so anyway, he was kind of drifting in and out of boxing, fighting now and again, you know, gaps in between, his big gaps in between his fights, taking on fringe contenders. He was always looking for a title shot again. And he eventually got... Uh, he was always looking for a title shot, sorry, and he eventually got his title shot against Vladimir Klitschko for the WBO version of the title. And by the time he fought Vladimir Klitschko, he was already 38 years old. Um, so he was not in his prime by any means. He was not in good shape, but he managed to get the victory and knock Vladimir Klitschko out in two rounds. Um, his most famous performance, and for most people, was probably his, um, you know, their favourite Corey Sanders fight. But for me personally... Definitely the Vladimir Klitschko fight is up there with my favourite Corey Sanders fights. But I also like the Burt Cooper fight. I also like his fight with Bobby Chez. Um, again, a lot of these guys are not the, the, the greatest opposition that he fought. But it's just the manner of his victory was entertaining. Um, I've never really liked Bobby Chez. So that's one of the reasons why, <laughs> why I, like his, I like Corey Sanders' victory over Bobby Chez. Um, and uh, yeah, I'll, like I said, I'll put annotation links to, to all these fights or a lot of these fights that I'm mentioning so you can go watch them for yourself. But I'd say... The Vladimir Klitschko fight and the Bobby Chez fight were my two favourite Saunders, Saunders fights. The Klitschko, Bobby Chez and um, maybe Burt Cooper. Those, those, <laughs> those are my favourite um, Corey Saunders fights. Um, and obviously, yeah, he knocked out Vladimir Klitschko in two rounds. And in my personal opinion, I believe that a prime Corey Saunders would always beat. 
Vladimir Klitschko. I know Vladimir Klitschko's improved since that loss to Corey Sanders, but he didn't fight a prime Corey Sanders in the first place. Right? A prime Corey Sanders was a hell of a lot better than the Corey Sanders that Vladimir Klitschko lost to. Yeah? So I believe a prime Sanders would always be a prime Vladimir Klitschko, just based on his style, based on his hand speed. Right? Uh, I think both Klitschkos to this day still um, maintain that Corey Sanders was by far the quickest handed heavyweight they, they've ever been in the ring with. The guy had incredibly quick hands. And when he let his hands go, my days, you better get out of the way <laughs> because he's dangerous with them, with them combinations. When he lets his hands go, it's like, wow, man, this guy was like a freshen machine. You know what I mean? Um, and yeah, based on his style, you know, Corey Sanders, he didn't really have much of a jab. He was, he was just primarily a power puncher and a counter puncher. And he would basically circle around the ring and he would pot shot here and there. You know, he, he had a, a very similar style to David Hay, although he would keep his hands up more than David Hay. He wasn't as athletic as Hay and stuff like that. But the, the method, you know, the, the basic method of his, of his fighting style was, was similar to David Hay and that he would wander around the ring and look for counters and pot shots. But to me... He was more talented than David Hay. I know people are going to think, what are we talking about? But no, I actually believe like in terms of his boxing skills, he was more talented than David Hay. And I think he was a harder puncher than David Hay and had quicker hands than David Hay. He just didn't have quicker feet and he wasn't in as good a shape as David Hay. And he was a lot easier to hit than David Hay as well. But when he let his hands go, my goodness, he was so fast and he was so powerful and he was a very good counter puncher. Yeah, he knocked a lot of people out with counter punches um, I believe the, the the shot which started, um, um, you know, the uh, which, the shot which initially hurt Vladimir Klitschko when he fought him was a left hand counter. He was very quick with that shot, uh, and I know when he fought Vitali Klitschko as well, um, he caught Vitali Klitschko with a left hand counter in the first round, and he shook Vitali up more than anyone else in Vitali's career, including Lennox Lewis. No one shook Vitali Klitschko up as badly as Corey Sanders did in that first round. That was a tremendous left hand. And I, I know uh, Klitschko went down in that first round, uh, but it was ruled a slip. But I'm telling you right now, a lot of referees would have would have ruled that as a knockdown because the punches which Sanders was throwing did cause the slip, if you get what I'm saying. You know what I mean? And I, I know he wasn't... It's not, it's not like Vitali was out on his feet, but the punches that Sanders was throwing did cause the chain of events, do you understand, for him to go down. So a lot of a lot of refs would have called that a knockdown, but you know it is what it is. I'm not here to complain about that or anything, but you know, um, a prime Corey Sanders as well for me would always give Vitali Klitschko hell, and he would have a good chance of beating Vitali Klitschko. You understand? I'm, I'm not I'm not disrespecting the Klitschkos here. I think the Klitschkos are very good fighters, and I think they would have beaten a lot of the all time greats out there. Seriously, I, I rate the Klitschkos, especially Vitali, um, because boxing is all about styles. You know, styles make fights. And I just think that no fighter in the history of boxing has ever been invincible. There's always someone out there that could beat them. It might not even be someone who people expect, you know, to beat him. It's like when Vernon Forrest lost to Ricardo Mayorga, no one expected that. Vernon Forrest had just beaten the number one pound for pound fighter or number two pound for pound fighter, uh, Shane Mosley, twice. No one expected him to get knocked out by this wild swinging brawler from Nicaragua called Ricardo Mayoga. It just caught everyone off guard. Yeah. Boxing is like that. Styles make fights. And I just feel Corey Sanders always had the style um, to give the Klitschko's loads of trouble. Yeah. The style and the, and the punching power and the hand speed and the ability. Um, you know, it was, it, was, it was just a joy to watch for me anyway. So yeah, this video has gone on pretty long. So I'm just going to wrap it up. Let me know what you lot think about Corey Sanders. Um, how well did you know him as a fighter? Was the first time you saw him against uh, Vladimir Klitschko or did you know him, or like me, did you know him before that from his days as a young contender? Um, yeah, to me, like I say, my favourite ever Southpaw heavyweight. So uh, yeah, uh, leave your comments in the comment section below. Also check out the annotation links to uh, the videos of some of Corey Sanders' uh, of my favourite Corey Sanders knockouts. And uh, oh yeah, in case you don't already know, in case you've come to this video, you know, from some other means, um, I'm no longer on my old channel. I'm no longer uploading videos to my old channel, Hatman TV. I'm now on a new channel. So make sure if you, if you still want to, you know, get videos from me, 
Um, if you still want to follow me on YouTube, make sure that you subscribe to my new channel, which this video is now uploaded to. Um, the new channel is Hatman Strikes Back. Yeah, that's Hatman Strikes Back. I'll leave a link um, to, uh, you know, to subscribe to this channel below, or obviously you can press the subscribe button above. Make sure you subscribe to the new channel if you want to see my you know, future videos. The old channel is still going to be there. I'm still going to leave all the old videos up. I might post you know, a video there you know, up on that channel every now and then. Um, but like I say, that the, the old channel is now restricted to 15-minute uh, to uploads, unfortunately. So I've decided to start a new channel, which is Hatman Strikes Back. So make sure you subscribe to the new channel if you haven't done so already. Um, so yeah... Um, I'd just like to say R.I.P. Corey Sanders. My condolences out to his friends and family. And, uh, you know, boxing mourns a, a very talented fighter um, who will be missed. So, yeah. Anyway, this is Hatman. I'm out.